Okay, we will start today's meeting of the local government uh, committee. We do not yet have a quorum, so we will begin as a subcommittee. Uh, we've asked the sergeant to uh, call the absent members. Just a few housekeep housekeeping items to go over before we start. Uh, our policy on testimony is two main witnesses per side with up to three minutes each person. Anyone beyond those limits uh, should simply state their name, organization, and position for the record. We have 11 items on today's agenda. Item number five, AB 727 Wilk, has been pulled off calendar by the author. Three items are proposed for consent. Item number one, AB 313 Atkins. Item number two, AB 347 Chang and item 12, AB 1532, uh, Local Government Committee. Once we get a quorum, uh, we'll entertain a motion on the consent calendar. We do hear bills in author sign-in order. Uh, and so our first bill uh, at this time is item number 11, AB 1455, Mr. Rodriguez. And Mr. Gomez. <laughs> Thanks. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, we introduced AB 1455 to encourage and facilitate discussions and negotiations to transfer Montero Airport back to local. AB 1455 would authorize the City of Ontario to issue revenue bonds to finance the acquisition from the City of Los Angeles. These revenue bonds would be secured solely by the revenue and charges at Ontario. Our intent is not to pick a winner. Oh, his mic is his mic. Nor do we intend to disadvantage one side or the other in these negotiations. Our intent is to have a vehicle ready for any agreement that comes out of discussions between Los Angeles and Ontario. The language of the bill is not final. There will be amendments as conversations to transfer the airport progress. We will make sure to keep this committee informed of any other amendments that are made. From my perspective, the transfer of the airport to local control would be a positive step forward and help spur our regional economy. Local on-site control would help increase flights and passenger volumes. It would also improve maintenance of local facilities and promote economic development in and around the airport. This legislation is supported by a broad coalition of local governments, businesses, law enforcement, and labor. The bill has a broad coalition of bipartisan co-authors from Riverside, San Bernardino, and Los Angeles counties. This issue is extremely important to my district, and I hope that you will allow this bill to continue to move forward. We have agreed to take the worker retention amendments proposed by Vice Chair Gonzalez, and we'll amend the bill before it comes to the floor. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Now we'll turn the microphone over to our Principal co-author, Assemblymember Jimmy Gomez. Thank you so much for uh, having us here today. Uh, I'm here to support and present on AB uh, 1455 when it comes to the issue of transferring and reaching an agreement on the Ontario airport. This is a, this is a tough issue, and one of the main reasons I agreed to do it is I do have familiarity with the airport. I grew up out in Riverside. I actually, my first flight was out of Ontario, first time ever boarding a plane. So I remember the day where there were numerous flights going in and out of that airport um, hour after hour. And I know that it plays a big role in the regional economy of the Inland Empire. At the same time, um, the only way these kind of deals are reached is if there's two sides trying to be um, honest brokers in an agreement. And that's why I'm here, to represent the interests of Los Angeles, but also um, with the with the heart and consideration of the people of the Inland Empire. This could be a, a difficult issue, but I think that we can reach an agreement as long as we start trying to um, find a common ground for that transfer. A lot of work. Um, there's members that are um, in the LA delegation that don't want any transfer. There's some that believe that a transfer should take place immediately. But um, we're trying to we are trying to bring the sides together and reach, a, uh, reach an agreement, hopefully, uh, in the future. Um, one last point. 
I can't um, give this presentation without acknowledging uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti. He's the first mayor of Los Angeles who has actually believes that a transferring the airport would be a good thing, but he has to also protect the interests of the city of Los Angeles as well as the uh, Los Angeles Airport uh, Authority. Um, and I know that he's working hard with his counterparts over in the city of Ontario to kind of reach that agreement. So I'm here to ask for your I vote and give us time to continue working on this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Before we uh, proceed with witnesses in support, we do have a quorum, so I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Mainshine. Here. Mainshine here. Gonzalez. Gonzalez here, Alejo, Alejo here, Chu, Cooley, Gordon, Holden, Linder, Linder here, Waldron, Waldron here. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in support. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and, mem and members of the committee. My name is Al Bowling, Ontario City Manager and Interim Director for the Ontario International Airport Authority. On behalf of the City of Ontario and the OIAA, I am here to voice support for AB 1455 and urgent I vote. We are pleased that Assembly Members Rodriguez and Gomez co-authored this bill and that it enjoys widespread bipartisan support in our region. Ontario seeks the return of ONT to local control while making LA whole with respect to its unreimbursed investments. This objective is consistent with previous transfers of U.S. public airports between governmental agencies. There is no investment in ONT by Los Angeles and little investment by its Department of Airports that has not long ago been repaid from the airport's revenues. Moreover, Ontario International operates on a residual revenue basis and generates no money for the City of Los Angeles directly. Residents of Los Angeles therefore derive no financial or other benefits. The OIAA as the new airport sponsor will take responsibility for all of ONT's debt and grant obligations, as well as for the development of air service and the airport property. Ontario and OIAA will also release Los Angeles <coughs> from liability arising out of certain airport operations and conditions, such as any future environmental claims. The airport's transfer is an important and urgent matter. The loss of air service at Ontario International over the past seven years has had a huge negative impact on the region's economy. More than $660 million of economic activity in the form of job losses and revenue that would have been invested in the communities was, was lost in 2014 alone compared with 2007, which was the height of passenger traffic at the airport. The shift in airport market share from Ontario International to LAX is also significantly affecting the environment. There are approximately 1.3 million unnecessary vehicle trips going past Ontario and driving the 56 miles to LAX annually. That's 72 million vehicle miles per year, producing 165,000 pounds of volatile organic compounds and 37,000 pounds of particulate matter in an already polluted basin. <coughs> I ask for an I vote, and I thank you for your assistance and support in making the transfer of Ontario to local control a reality in 2015. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Greg Devereaux. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of San Bernardino County. On behalf of San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors, I am here to urge an I vote on AB 1455. We appreciate Assembly Members Rodriguez and Gomez authoring the legislation and are grateful for the strong bipartisan support it has received from legislators in Southern California. The authors and co-authors have joined an unprecedented four-county coalition of 138 governments, public officials, businesses, civic organizations, and newspaper editorial boards that support local control for Ontario. The quest to return Ontario International Airport to local control began in sev several years ago while I was still city manager in Ontario. The effort was prompted by the steep decline in airline and passenger activity at the airport and the profound change in direction in the management and control of what is widely considered to be the number one economic engine in the Inland Empire. At year-end 2014, Ontario had lost 43% of its air service and annual passenger traffic since 2007. In the meantime, LAX's market share among Southern California airports has steadily increased to more than 76%, 
its highest mark, market share in a quarter century. Today, Ontario International is seeing essentially the same level of passenger activity as it did in 1985 when Los Angeles acquired the airport. Yet since that time, the Inland Empire has added 2.3 million people and 585,000 jobs. Equally troubling has been Los Angeles World Airport's failure to be accountable or take responsibility for the decline, let alone take decisive corrective actions. The LA Board of Airport Commissioners has not held a meeting in Ontario since 2007. The airport master plan was abruptly terminated in 2008. Marketing and advertising expenditures were slashed by 90%, and in a nationally unprecedented action, the airport manager position was downgraded to part-time. Your support for this bill will encourage and help facilitate the transfer of the airport from the current airport sponsor, Los Angeles, to a new local airport authority with representation from Riverside, San Bernardino, and Orange Counties. The Inland Empire and the entire Southern California region will be better for it. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you. Uh, further witnesses in support, name uh, and organization only, please. Kira Ross, whoops, good afternoon. Kira Ross on behalf of the City of Riverside in support of the bill. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Paul Gonzalez representing the cities of Chino, Chino Hills, Diamond Bar, Fontana, Yerupa Valley, Lakewood, Palmdale, Rancho Cucamonga, and Victorville all in support of the bill. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, question. We have a motion from Mr. Alejo, second from Ms. Waldron. Ms. Waldron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Clearly, Ontario has been underutilized, and it has great potential, um, and not to mention the amount of growth in that area, the opportunity for more economic uh, activity as well associated with uh, using the airport to its capacity. Um, as a representative who part of my district is southwest Riverside, I'd like to be added as a co-author to the bill, and I support it. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez. I just want to thank you for um, agreeing to accept the worker retention language uh, in the, I guess, before the floor. Yes. Um, it, uh, it's important, obviously, in the discussions, and I know there are negotiations and ongoing discussions of, about um, the transfer of the airport, uh, that we ensure that the, the workers who are currently there working under kind of the LAX rules um, aren't displaced and brought under new rules. So um, thank you for adding that piece in just so it's on the table and, and clear in all of the negotiations. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I, I want to thank both of you, uh, Mr. Gomez, Mr. Rodriguez, for your hard work on this topic. I know it's an important topic to your district and, and to the state, so I really want to commend you for uh, all the hard work that you've done to date. I know there's, uh, you have a lot more to go, um, but just want to say publicly say thank you for all the hard work that you're both doing. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, you may close. Or Sir Glass for I vote. Okay. Can I ask the clerk please call the roll? The motion is due pass as amended. Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Gonzalez aye. Alejo? Alejo aye. Chu? Oh. Chu aye. Cooley? Gordon? Holden? Linder? Waldron? Aye. Waldron aye. That's against the rules, but all right. <laughs> Your item is out 5 0. Okay. Thank you. And then do we have a motion for the consent calendar? Second. Motion from Mr. Chu, second from Ms. Waldron. I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Mainchine. Mainchine, Mainchine aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez aye. Alejo. Aye. Alejo aye. Chu. Aye. Chu aye. Cooley. Gordon. Holden. Linder. Waldron. Waldron aye. Consent calendar passes. Uh, next is item number six, AB 738. Ms. Gaines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to begin by addressing a quick item in the committee analysis. Under the policy consideration portion on page four, I would like to off 
offer authors amendments to require sign-off from both regional transits board and the governing body of a territory being proposed to be detached. AB 738 would help provide a more updated and streamlined way for cities and counties to participate in RT services and amenities. AB 738 also creates an updated process for annexation and detachment of territory in the RT. There's no opposition to this bill, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote. With me here today to testify is Mike Wally, Wiley, sorry, and he's a good friend. Mike Wiley, representing RT. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Assembly, Assemblywoman Gaines. Uh, members of the committee, I'm Mike Wiley. I'm RT's general manager. It's uh, good to see you again. Uh, this bill actually creates um, flexibility for local jurisdictions that does not exist today um, in, their, in terms of their participation in the regional transit district. Um, essentially today, um, it's an all or nothing proposition. And we're very sensitive to the fact that local jurisdictions uh, benefit greatly from a certain amount of local investment and local control in decision making. This bill creates that level of flexibility. It allows local jurisdictions that have expressed an interest in participating more actively in the RT district to retain a certain amount of, of local decision making, the look and the feel of some of the services that operate within their district. Uh, under our current legislation, um, that's not allowed. This creates that flexibility and it really pays, paves the path for uh, decision making on the part of local jurisdictions to operate service in a more cost effective manner by participating more completely with regional transit. Um, and with that, I would urge your support. Other witnesses in support? Seeing none. Uh, witnesses in opposition? Seeing none. Uh, questions or comments from the committee? Motion from Mr. Chu. Second, Second from Ms. Waldron. Uh, any, uh, Ms. Gaines, would you like to close? Respectfully ask for an aye vote. Okay. Ask the clerk to please call the roll. The motion is to pass as amended. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Alejo. Chu. Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley. Gordon. Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden. Linder. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, aye. Your measure is out 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next is item number 10, AB 1350. Mr. Salas. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Ms. Vice Chair, committee members. I present before you Assembly Bill 1350. Um, this is in response to a bill I authored last year, AB 2546, which allows the Kern County uh, Board of Supervisors to establish the Kern County Hospital Authority. This bill contains technical and clarifying changes to ensure the successful transfer of the medical center to a hospital authority. I do have several folks here to testify in support. Uh, Mr. Judd, thank you for joining us. I believe, well, Michelle and uh, Phil with SEIU. And of course, our good friend. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Yoder. Um, uh, my name is Russell Judd. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Kern Medical Center um, at the County of Kern in Bakersfield, uh, California. Uh, we appreciate uh, Assemblyman Salas' and the introduction and the passing of our bill last year that enabled the formation of the Kern County Hospital Authority. Uh, we're before you today um, with some technical and clarifying changes uh, to those bills. Um, I'm pleased to report that the formation of the authority is uh, progressing. The Board of Supervisors of the County of Kern are in draft of preparing the actual ordinance and we anticipate in the next 30 to 60 days to begin the public process uh, of passing that ordinance. Uh, the bill today uh, covers some important items for clarification. Uh, it ensures that the employees um, of Kern Medical Center and members of SERU are covered under the most recent uh, memorandum of understanding. Um, it allows the authority to borrow the appropriate funds uh, necessary from the county treasury and also gives us the opportunity uh, to establish our own treasury. Um, and it also ensures that the county employees being transferred uh, to the authority uh, retain uh, all of their retirement uh, benefits. Uh, again, we appreciate uh, this 
uh, approval of the slight technical amendment uh, to this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Mr. Chairman of the members, Paul Yoder on behalf of the Kern County Board of Supervisors, this is us keeping the hospital running uh, in the margins and with the help of our friends in labor, and we just ask your I vote today. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Michelle Cabrera with SEIU California, and um, we have a support if amended position. We are um, currently in active conversation with both the uh, Retirement Association uh, for Kern County, Kaysera, um, labor, the author, as well as um, the county and the medical center, just to make sure that there is, that the language is clarified so that we can ensure um, continuity of, of existing county employee retirement benefits. So I think we're all moving in the same direction and, and hopefully we'll get there um, with this continued partnership. And I have today one of our workers from Kern uh, Medical Center, Philip Brown, uh, local 521 member here to testify. Good afternoon. My name is Philip Brown. I'm an employee at uh, Kern Medical Center, member of 521. I'd like to thank again Mr. Sal Assemblyman Salas for his hard work in getting the health care authority. I'd also th like to thank Mr. Judd and the leadership that he has shown at Kern Medical Center uh, since, the, uh, since we moved forward. Um, that said, moving forward, we do need to ensure that the health care uh, retirement benefits that employees at Kern Medical Center are protected. Um, I've been there 15 years, and in the event that the health care authority doesn't succeed, um, I would like to ensure, as well as my other co-workers are very concerned about their health, uh, the retirement benefits. So an I vote and amending this would help all the employees. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Seeing none, witnesses in opposition? Qu questions or comments from the committee? We have a motion from Mr. Chu, a second from Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Salas, you may close. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Ask the clerk to please call the roll. The motion is due pass. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Alejo. Chu. Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley. Aye. Cooley, aye. Gordon. Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden. Linder. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, aye. Your motion is out 6 0. Thank you. Next uh, is Ms. Gonzalez. with uh, item three, AB 504. Where's Trace? Uh, Jeremy's in the back. Just okay, is Jeremy coming? Is he going to just Mr. Chair and members, Article 11, Section 7 of the California Constitution grants cities and counties what is often referred to as police power. And it's from this power that local government derive their authority to regulate land through planning, zoning, and building ordinances, thereby protecting public health, safety, and welfare. Because California's constitution explicitly grants this police power to cities and counties, this power may not be contracted out. It's with this in mind that I present to you Assembly Bill 504, which clarifies the responsibility of local governments in the exercise of land use authority. Specifically, this bill will clarify that the local government may delegate performance of administrative or ministerial planning functions, but must retain all non-administrative or non-ministerial planning functions. It will require any planning actions taken on behalf of local government to be appealable to the legislative body of the government. In other words, this bill is about transparency and representation in government. In San Diego, the nonprofit organization Civic San Diego, a successor agency to a redevelopment CCDC agency, has performed planning, zoning, and permitting functions on behalf of the city. As it stands now, if residents or community groups do not agree with what Civic San Diego has planned, they can only go to the nonprofit's board of directors, which is not accountable to the city council that was elected to be stewards of the city's development. The public deserves to have a say in the future of their neighborhoods, and this bill is a way to ensure that. Originally, originally I plan to have a member of Civic San Diego's Board of Directors, Dr. Murtaza Baxamusa, joining us to shed some light on the issue, but a last-minute emergency has left him unable to join us today. As such, a copy of his intended remarks is being distributed for your consideration. But with me today to testify in place the importance of the bill are representatives from Unite Here Local 30 in the state Building and Construction Trades Council of California. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Alexis Olbray, and I'm speaking on behalf of Unite Here Local 30, San Diego County's Hotel and Food Service Workers Union. 
We're in strong support of Assemblywoman Gonzalez's bill because we believe that the decisions shaping how our cities and neighborhoods grow need checks and balances to assure, ensure accountability. By requiring planning, zoning, and permitting decisions to ultimately rest with the San Diego City Council, we will ensure that there is adequate public input. But more importantly, this will provide the opportunity for review on a project's citywide impact. Land use decisions directly affect the kinds of jobs we create, and we must ensure that all workers involved in such projects are compensated adequately. Low wage workers impact citywide services, especially housing and transportation, and this is something that we must not overlook in the planning of a city's future. This is not to discredit the value of the services that organizations like Civic San Diego provide. In fact, we're happy to work with these organizations to bring about economic development that benefits our communities. However, I would strongly urge the members of this committee to consider the unintended consequences that may come in the trade-off between transparency and efficiency. Assembly Bill 504 will allow us to avoid these unintended consequences, and it is for this reason that I respectfully urge your aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. Nobody loves redevelopment more than construction workers, I don't think. Uh, it means jobs for them, and it means redevelopment of their cities. Uh, two noble goals. However, um, they nor the, uh, the construction workers I represent nor the heads of their unions uh, look at redevelopment lightly. They understand there needs to be a, uh, some transparency to what's going to get redeveloped, what's going to be developed, uh, because they live in these cities too. Uh, and they represent workers that live in these cities. So we don't willy-nilly support redevelopment at the uh, expense of uh, what that redevelopment is going to look like. We feel like uh, the oversight laid out in this legislation goes a long way towards ensuring that uh, what gets built in San Diego and in other cities in the state is going to uh, be what's right for the city, not just because it can be done. For those reasons, we're happy to support the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in support, name and uh, organization position only, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Justin Fanzel on behalf of IBEW, IBEW Local 569 and the California State Association of Electrical Workers all in support. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Seeing none, witnesses in opposition? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Moira Topp on behalf of the City of San Diego. Um, and I apologize that we are here uh, late in opposition, but regrettably we are in opposition to the bill. Um, the, the Ledge Council um, opinion that is identified in the analysis and I think that was referred to is predicated on a question that has nothing to do with the activities of Civic San Diego. Uh, the, the Ledge Council opinion is about contractual relations or contracts that city governments enter into with private landowners that then impede the uh, future, in perpetuity, uh, development options for, any, for that particular property. Civic San Diego, on the other hand, has been authorized by the city council. It has been reauthorized multiple times, and amendments to the city or to the uh, Civic San Diego Charter have been approved by the city council. Nothing is done by Civic San Diego that isn't authorized by the city council itself. Uh, a, the, the ministerial functions in terms of permitting are done in accordance with community plans, and those community plans all are adopted by the city council within San Diego. So we believe there is a tremendous amount of transparency. In terms of what this bill will do, we think this bill will add time and delay to development projects in the downtown core of San Diego. Uh, as you can imagine, the types of projects that are being done in the downtown core are infill projects, transit-oriented development, affordable housing projects, bringing green space back to the downtown core. <clears throat> and these projects, are often they often operate on a very thin margin. And so when you start... In, um, uh, adding delay and uncertainty to these types of projects, you can imagine that we will we, some of those projects will suffer, unfortunately. We think that it's the wrong time to be imposing unnecessary burdens when the city council all ha already has tremendous authority with respect to the actions of Civic San Diego. And we ask for your no vote. Mr. Chairman and members uh, and Assembly Member Gonzalez, I'm Tony Gonzalez representing the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce. 
And I regret that we must uh, oppose uh, AB 504 in its current form. Uh, we appreciate the intent. I, I, I understand the concerns that you've raised. It's our position, however, that Civic San Diego has done a fantastic job. I think by every measure, at least that we can see, the work that it's done in San Diego over the years has been, in the downtown area, has been spectacular, and nothing short of that. It's our understanding that the that Civic San Diego is a creature of the City Council of San Diego, that if there were abuses, or at least a perception of abuses, or this becoming a rogue agency or running out of control, that it is entirely within the power of the San Diego City Council to abolish Civic San Diego or revise its charters. So we think that everything that is accomplished in this bill can be accomplished locally by the, city, by the San Diego City Council itself. And so for those reasons, we do oppose the bill. Any other witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, questions or comments from the committee? Motion from Mr. Chu, second from Mr. Alejo. Ms. Gonzalez, I have, well, actually, before you go, I have a few comments. I'm sure you do. Uh, <laughs> I was having flashbacks to the previous 10 years with this. I feel like we've uh, had this discussion we before. We have. We have once or twice. Um, and again, at the risk of making our flight home uncomfortable, I do want to uh, go through my reasons for. It's okay. The vote will be okay. <laughs> yeah. Our you're going to do, you're gonna do fine. just fine. You're going to do just fine. Um, but I do want to outline the reasons why I, uh, why I will be opposing this today. Um, in my view, that this is really a local issue, um, and it's something that I would feel more comfortable in being legislated at the local level, uh, you know, rather than uh, from here. The mayor and council do have the authority to, to put people on this, to nominate people, to approve them, to take them off, um, to change the charter, to really disband the entire um, the entire organization if necessary. And it has been functioning since 1975. We did do a lot. And in fact, you and I were partnered on a, a whole host of these to really revitalize uh, our downtown. We got Petco Park built. We uh, redeveloped the 32 blocks around there and really turned uh, San Diego gas lamp into uh, a destination, just a thriving, a thriving downtown in my view um, really one of the nicest downtowns in the country. Um, and so now I'm concerned that uh, the purpose of the organization uh, would be negated, uh, the, the process would be more onerous, onerous and uh, uh, really lead to unnecessary and, and costly delays. Um, and so uh, for that reason, uh, I will be uh, I won't be supporting this today, but I do, you know, I, I do, I understand where you're coming from, Ms. Gonzalez, and uh, how this is intended. So uh, I look forward to working with you as it proceeds, but uh, in light of, in light of really what we were able to accomplish um, as a city, uh, I do want to oppose this today. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, further comments from the committee, Ms. Gonzalez, you may close. Yes. Um, first, in a in response to the local function of this. Actually, this is of statewide concern. San Diego, of course, right now is the only jurisdiction that finds it appropriate to completely outsource their decision making to a nonprofit corporation. The legal opinion that, that Ledge Council wrote did not talk about private developers. In fact, specifically addressed whether or not it was permissible for a local government to uh, allow without appeal decisions to be made, these types of decisions to be made by a nonprofit. So I think it spoke very clearly to the circumstances surrounding Civic San Diego. But regardless of that legal opinion, I brought this bill before uh, the legal opinion because I think it's good public policy, quite frankly. You referenced, of course, our work together on the on um, Ballpark Village. God, that was a long time ago. It was. You had more hair. I had we less. Younger. Yeah. Um, we were uh, I'm just teasing you. Uh, one of the reasons that was so successful, it was one of the rare decisions by CCDC, our, our, our redevelopment agency, that was actually appealable to the city council. So when that happened, all the city council members actually had to have a say in what that development looked like. We ended up with a project labor agreement, labor peace. We ended up with local hire, reentry hire for um, people who had been on felon, who had been felons. We, we ended up with training for our workforce, livable wages and health care. It was a great project. But that only happened because it went to a body that could determine those things and not just whether um, so, so a development looked right, quite frankly. 
There is currently a, a proposal for a 317-room hotel in, on Market Street um, in my district that has no way to be appealed to the city council. We can't talk about job quality. We can't talk about parks. We can't talk about living wages. We can't talk about anything except how that structure is going to look. I think we owe it to my residents, the places that Civic San Diego ex hopes to expand into areas of the 80th Assembly District in City Heights and Encanto to allow them to have a voice in the process. They can only do that through their city council members. Our city council is split on this. Our mayor obviously is opposed, but I'd ask that this body uh, not only do this for public policy reasons, but I think clearly for the legal reasons that have been outlined by the legislative council as well. I respectfully ask for everybody else's I vote. <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably in good shape to get everyone else's, but um, with that, uh, thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. We have a motion and a second. I ask the clerk to please call the roll. The motion is do pass. Mainshine. No. Mainshine, no. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Alejo. Aye. Alejo, aye. Chu. Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley. Aye. Cooley, aye. Gordon. Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden. Aye. Holden, aye. Linder. Waldron. Your bill is out six to one.